I'm going to open the query analyzer from a shortcut on the desktop here. I'll go ahead and use the local SQL Server. I'll use Windows Authentication. And I'm going to open up a script inside the D drive in my samples directory called Action Queries. Now, again, I don't want to use the default master database. This is a mistake that everybody makes at one time or another executing queries against master when they intended to execute them against a user database. So it's nice to have at the beginning of your scripts this use shark go. We're going to use shark. I could have selected that from here as well. Here's what it looks like to insert a single row of data into a database. I'm using this insert into statement. Now that into is optional. I could simply have said insert TBL category and that would work inside of these parentheses I am specifying the field in this case only one that I want to insert data into the category field now this category table also has a category ID field but that's an identity field so that will be created for me automatically by SQL Server I don't need to include that in my insert statement I then tell it the values that I want to insert and again the value here that I insert has to be enclosed in single quotes if it's a text value or if it's a date. If it's a numeric field that I'm inserting into, I don't need the quotes. So, in this case, there's only one field. If there was more than one field, I could list them here separated by commas. If this were the only field, or if I were going to be inserting into the only fields in the database, I could actually leave out this field list over here. If I leave it out though, there's going to be the assumption that I'm providing values for every single field in the table. I'll run this, and I've now inserted a value, Sharkware, into the category table called TBL category, and I get back a little message showing me that one row was affected. If I want, I can retrieve that new identity value that was inserted using a system function called at at identity. This system function at at identity will automatically retrieve for me the last identity value that was inserted in the current connection or the current session that's going on. And so if I press go it tells me category ID was three. I only had two categories previously. I've now added a third one in SQL Server automatically assigned that value to it. One thing I'll just caution you about, there's something that we haven't really looked at yet called triggers. Triggers are code or stored procedures, SQL procedures, that run automatically when you perform some sort of an action. And one type of trigger is an insert trigger that would run automatically when I inserted a value. And I could have an insert trigger that when I made an insert into the category table, would also insert a value into some other table. And I want to caution you that using at at identity here is automatically going to give me the value of the last identity that was inserted, even if it wasn't in this particular table. So be careful about that. Now SQL Server 2000 added a couple of features specifically to address this problem of which identity value am I getting back. I'll show you these. I'm just going to paste these in. One thing you can do is select scope identity. Unlike at at identity, using scope identity, which notice has to have the parentheses after it, scope identity will only give you back the newest identity value inserted in this session or by this connection for the current scope. And if there's a trigger that fired that added a new row in some other table somewhere, that would not be considered in the current scope. So this would safely, in this instance, always give me back the number from the category table, even if there were some triggers involved. Another thing that you can do is this. Select Ident Current and specify any table you want. And that will give you back the latest identity value that was added to that table by any session, any connection. Just another alternative to the old standby of using at at identity. These two were introduced in SQL Server 2000. 
You've seen that when we have to add values into a text column, we surround those values with single quotes. And you perhaps have wondered, what happens if the value that I want to add itself has single quotes in it? This might be a name like O'Brien, or in this case, we're adding something called water-resistant jacket, and water-resistant is in quotes. Maybe that indicates that it's not really water-resistant. Now, what we really want to add here is not double quotes around water-resistant, but just a single quote around water-resistant. Using double quotes is not a problem. It's only single quotes. Because the problem is, if we start here with the A, once we get to a single quote over here after the A, SQL Server is going to think that we've ended the string that we're inserting into this field, and it'll wonder what this water resistant is here. So we need some way to keep this going, and the way to do it is simply to double up the single quotes. If you want to enclose single quotes inside a character value that has single quotes around it, just put a second single quote and that's what that is. So I add a second one there, a second one here, and you can see by the fact that it all turned red that this is now considered a single value that I'm entering into this description field. And so this will work just fine. I'll select from the top to the bottom and enter it. And we successfully were able to enter that value with water resistant in the description. You can insert multiple rows. So far we've only been inserting one table at a time, but I could create a table called TBL product back, let's say, and perhaps I want to insert into it the product ID, product category ID, description, and so on from not just one set of values, but from a select clause that's going to define multiple values. So for example here, I'm selecting all of the products from TBL product with the columns being returned to me in this order where the category ID equals 2 and I want to insert all that information into this table called TBL product back. I can do that. In other words, in an insert statement what follows the field list for the table that you want to insert into can either be a values clause with individual values hard-coded in there, or it can be a select clause, which allows you to select data from other tables in this database or from another database. You can also create a table on the fly and select data into that table. In other words, create a table and append data to it in one operation by using select into. Here we're taking information from TBL product and we're going to select it into TBL product back. I'll highlight this and we're also filtering out so that we're only going to in this operation insert products where the category ID is 2. I run this. It tells me that five rows were affected. I didn't have a table before called TBL product back. It created that table for me. If we go over here to the enterprise manager you'll see it doesn't even show up yet. I have to hit F5, I'll just select the tables tag, hit F5 to refresh, and now I see TBL product back. I'll just double click on this and you see it automatically created all of these columns corresponding in data type to the columns that existed in the table that I selected to. But there's one problem here that you need to be careful about. Notice there's nothing here in the key column. What I'll do is close this and open it up in design view. No primary key was created. No indexes were created. So in many ways select into is really not necessarily a good idea. You're better off to create tables yourself to add whatever primary keys and indexes you need and then to append the data to them or at least be aware that if you do use select into that should not be the end of the line. You want to be able to add indexes so that any subsequent operations on that table are going to be efficient.